Hello and welcome to this London Museum Development tutorial. My name is Alec Ward and I'm the Museum Development Officer for Digital and Communications. So today I'm going to be taking you through how to create a basic virtual 360 tour of your museum using Google Tour Creator as well as the Google Street View app. Before we get into that, I just want to say that this is going to be a tutorial on creating a basic digital tour of your museum. If you want to do something more flashy or something you know more professional looking with more options and more interactivity then you're probably going to be looking at something developed by an external company. There are lots of companies out there who could build that sort of experience for you. Whilst it would be more expensive than obviously creating it yourself uh, using these three platforms, you'll probably get a more professional looking tour. So uh, what I will say is that we do have on our YouTube channel, which I'll link to in the description below, a video taking you through project grants, which is a really good option for museums who want to look for funding for these sorts of activities. So check out the Arts Council in England's National Lottery project grants which may be able to fund these sorts of digital experiences. So the first thing you want to do is to go to the App Store if you're on iOS or the Google Play Store if you're on Android and download the Google Street View app. We're going to be using this to create our 360 image of our museum. So once you've got the app downloaded you then want to open it up. You can log in at the top right there um, but then once you've logged in you want to click the bottom right image uh, which is the little orange camera and then you want to choose the option take photosphere and that will then allow you to start uh, using your camera to take your 360 images so basically it guides you through the process all you need to do is just line up the circle with the orange dots and um, the app will then build a 360 image using all of the pictures that you've captured once you've gone through the whole process and once your image has been downloaded uh, you then want to share your image. Click on the image and um, go down to the share option which is this sort of orange option at the bottom there um, and then click save image and that will save it to your camera roll. Um, you can then go into your camera roll and you can then uh, share that image with yourself so that you can use it on uh, the Google Tour Creator. Um, so I'd suggest either emailing it to yourself so you've got it on your uh, desktop or um, you know air dropping it if you have a Mac and then uh, we'll be using this image to create our 360 tour. So once you've got the content for your tour, the 360 uh, video and then also any other images that you might want to use within your tour, your next step is to go to the Google Tour Creator. So go to Google, search for Google Tour Creator and then your first option will be Tour Creator Google VR. That will bring you to the um, Google Tour Creator. Now to use this you will need a Google account. I'm already signed into mine. Um, you can either sign into yours or create an account which is free before you get started. And this is a free to use platform. So I have already created a tour, um, a British garden tour. Uh, as you saw through my 360 imaging, I was uh, using my garden as an example of an exhibition. Um, so we're going to do a new tour. First we want to give our tour a title, so I'm going to give it Garden Tour 2. Description, a tour of my garden. Category, there's lots of different categories that you can choose from. Um, Culture and humanity is probably the closest for museums. You can select an image for a cover photo, which will be the first image that people see. For now, I'm just going to use this image of uh, the Natural History Museum, which I took off of the free image platform Pixabay. So once you've got all of your description done, you've chosen your category, you've done your title, and you've selected your cover photo, you then click Create. Now the first thing you want to do is add a, add a scene. So if you're lucky enough to either already have a Google Street View tour of your museum, or if you know that you can get a good view of your museum from Google Street View, then you can search for it on Google. So I know that the Museum of London Docklands, for instance, you can see the front of it on Google. So if I was to search for that, I can then drag my little guy to where the entrance of the museum is, so that's about here. So here we can see the um, Museum of London uh, Docklands, the outside of it. If I wanted to I could use this as a scene and then I could start adding extra content around here as we're going to do in a second. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to upload the 360 image that we created earlier. All of my content is on my desktop which is where I like to leave things. Here's the 360 image that I created earlier. 
click open. I've not had a chance to properly look at this. There's a good chance it's not going to be very neat because I did it quite quickly. Um, when you're creating your 360 image, the longer you take to do it, the neater and more accurate it will be. Once you've chosen your image and it's uploaded, you then click Add Scene. So now we can see we've got my 360 image of my garden. Considering I did it pretty quickly, it's not too bad. A little bit wonky in places, but for the sake of this tutorial, it will do. Now the good thing about Google Tool Creator is that you can upload 360 images that you've created from elsewhere. So if you wanted to, you could invest in a high quality 360 image capturing um, camera. You can get those for, you know, fairly good ones for around about £100 upwards. And that will take a much better, much higher quality 360 image of the space. Obviously, if you're looking to do this cheap and on a budget, then your camera will suffice. But as you can see, this is slightly blurry, just where I wasn't overly uh, careful. Obviously, with the better camera, taking a bit more time with it, you'll get a much better finished product. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only going to be making one scene, but if you wanted to, you could add multiple scenes to your tool. Each scene theoretically could be a different exhibition, or you could do an interior and exterior of your museum. There's lots of different options for how you want to create your tool, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to create the one scene. So the first thing you want to do is give your scene a title. So this is going to be British Garden. Location, if you wanted to, you could add in the location of where you are. I'm in Essex. A description of um, this scene, so this is a recreation of a typical British garden. Now things that you can add in if you wanted to are ambient audio and um, scene narration. Basically when somebody plays this uh, tour you could have ambient sound coming in in the background, so if it was me and um, I might have some ambient garden sounds which I could incorporate, or if you wanted to you could narrate the entire scene, so you could have it so that you're giving a voiceover whilst people are looking through your 360 exhibition. So something you might want to do before you start adding your content is set a starting view. You can have it so that it will start randomly for uh, your audience, but if you set a starting view it will basically be the point where all of your audience jumps into your tour. So if you've got like a building, for instance, you might want to set the, the front of the building as your starting point. If you have an exhibition with a really, you know, central focus um, object or, or display, you might want to set that as your starting view. Um, for the sake of this, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to save it here. And that will basically automatically put whoever comes into this uh, 360 tour there as their starting point. So first things first, I'm going to add some ambient audio. Now I use the YouTube audio library to download um, some background audio. This is just uh, sort of quiet outdoors sounds. You can add those in. So now basically whenever anybody watches or views this 360 tour, the sounds they'll be hearing in the background are those ambient sounds of the outdoors. Theoretically, you could do the same for an exhibition if you wanted to have some like background exhibition sounds, then uh, go for it. But alternatively, you could have um, scene narration uh, so that you could do the voiceover for it. So the first thing we're going to do is add a point of interest. Now, what I also did was um, to take some images of interesting th points of this garden whilst I was outside. Um, because when you add a point of interest, you choose where the point is going to be. So the first one is going to be a barbecue. You um, can then choose if it's an image overlay. You can also have um, narration on the site as well. So if it was a specific object, for instance, and you wanted to um, talk a little bit about that object, you could add a narration about it. Um, but I'm just going to add an image. So I'm going to upload a picture of the barbecue that I took earlier so that you get a better view of it when you click on the point. Again, you can edit the images before you upload them if you wanted to. I use a... Uh, program called Pixelr to do my image editing. So now that you've added the point of interest, it should in a sec pop up as an image. There we go. So you can basically move it around to um, the size and uh, sort of shape an area that you want it to be when people click on it. This is basically how they're going to see it when they're looking through the tour. So they'll come to it, they'll see that there's a point of interest there, they'll click it and then the image will pop up. Now you can add information to the image such as uh, a title, so an example of a barbecue. And you can add a description up to 300 um, characters, 
So uh, this is the average British stone barbecue. And again, if you want to, you can add site narration to it. Um, so you could, you know, add a voiceover so that whenever anybody uh, clicks on this image, they'll also get the voiceover giving more details and further explanation. So now that we're happy with that one, we can add another point of interest. I think we're going to add a point of interest over here to show more of our bird feeder. And if you wanted to, you could add in a narration again. You'd record that separately, add that in as a file, just like I did with the ambient sounds. And you can add in as many points of interest as you want. I'm just going to do the two for this video so that you can get the idea. Um, but in your gallery space, you can you know keep adding points of interest, keep adding um, audio um, narration if you want, keep adding images. You don't even have to have images if you don't want. If you just wanted to add further information, for instance, you could just add a point of interest as an information point. So you have the eye there, and then uh, you title it. And then again, you could either have it as a description, or you could also have it as an audio description as well if you wanted to. The one thing I would say is from an access point of view, it's good to have both um, so that uh, people can listen to it, um, and people can also read it as well. So once you're happy with everything, um, happy with the number of scenes that you've got. Again, if you wanted another scene, you could add the scene and go through the exact same process again. Once you're happy with everything, uh, the next stage is to publish it. So you um, click publish and I'm going to have it as a unlisted so that people can't find it unless they have the link. Um, but if you wanted it public, you just you know leave it as public, hit publish. And that will then give you a link which you can share. So this has been published um, on the um, POLY Poly platform um, where there's loads of other different kinds of tours made by organizations and made by individuals. And again, here are our scenes and you can see there's our bird feeder with the information about the bird feeder. Here's our barbecue with, again, the information about the barbecue, water feature. And the other thing that I quite like about it is that it ticks off the things that you've seen so that if you've missed something, you can, you know, try and find where it is or um, go through the list and it will uh, show you where the different things are. You've got the um, narration um, up here so uh, that's where the ambient sound and uh, the narration will be so that you can listen to those. So all in all it's um, quite an easy simple way of making a virtual tour of your exhibition. Now obviously you might want to do more with this than um, just have it on this platform. Obviously you can share a link to it via social media. So if you click the share button down there, that will give you links for Facebook, Twitter. Um, but it will also let you embed it. And uh, by clicking on the embed, it will give you the embed link, which you can paste onto your website. So you could then have this on a web page for people to view in their own time. Um, it's fairly easy to do. If you've got WordPress, um, you basically just copy the embed code, paste it into the WordPress page, and then it will do it all automatically. The majority of website um, content management systems will let you do that. So that's just a really quick introduction to how Google Tours work. It's a really simple platform to use, um, and you can make some really quite effective 360 tours. You can also do 180 as well if you only have a 180 image um, instead of all the way around. Um, you can do that just as easily. It's all about the content that you put into the platform when you're selecting your images. So I hope you found this useful. Best of luck with your 360 tours and thanks for watching.